Hey guys, welcome back, it's Ripe again. In today's video, a ridiculous neighbor built a barbed wire fence across my property and blocked off half my yard. He claims that he owns my property. Here is what happened, let's dive right into the video. So I have lived in this quiet corner of the world for nearly 10 years, during which time I was lucky enough to start a family with my wife by having a son. I was happy and I couldn't see how life could get any better. I was right about this, what I didn't consider though was how much worse life could get as well. The elderly neighbors were finalizing the sale on their home after reluctantly joining a retirement home. While we were sad to see them go, I was internally quite excited at the opportunity to meet another family to be friends with. Instead, on the official moving day, I was met by a man that appeared to be in his early 40s. He wore a sweaty tank top that I assumed was once white and enough body odor to put a skunk to shame, though the smell could have also been the heavy stench of alcohol on his breath. The man vaguely introduced himself but kept busy with his moving boxes. I offered to help but he immediately turned me down. I was still in the yard when he was unloading his heavier furniture, still alone and since he began other neighbors had come to say hello but in the same dismissive manner he had largely ignored them as well. So much for being a good neighbor, I thought. A few evenings later, my family and I were hanging out in the backyard when my son launched a beach ball out of the pool, sending it tumbling over to the neighbor's property. I calmly walked over to get it when I felt a sharp stinging pain in my foot finding a slow stream of red below me. I realized too late why walking barefoot around the trash of an alcoholic could be dumb as I gazed at the shard of glass sticking out from me. Ignoring the ball, I returned home and my wife treated my wound. Noticing my son slowly waddling to the neighbor's yard, I dashed back outside to intervene, coming face to face with the new guy himself. As we spoke, he seemed more annoyed at my minor intrusion than the fact that his broken beer bottles had cut me and could have easily injured my son or others. It was my first conversation with the man to last for longer than 10 seconds, but it was not one I was eager to repeat. At the end of our heated exchange of words, we somehow agreed that a fence would be better for us both, with him eager to keep me out while I was eager to keep my family uninjured. After missing my alarm, I left for work late the next morning. Pulling out of the driveway, I lurched abruptly, narrowly missing a truck that was parking on the curb outside my lousy neighbor's place. As I pulled out into the street, I noticed a Arlington Construction and Repair Company logo on the truck as two workmen stepped out, giving me equally unhappy looks. When I returned home in the early evening, I had to swerve as I was late to notice some big metal structure on my driveway. Though the light was fading, it was still clear enough to see the barbed wire fencing that now separated my house from my neighbor. The only problem being, it also cut me off from a huge part of my own driveway and front yard. I squeezed around the side of the house to find it continued even to my backyard, with my pool now secured on the wrong side of the fence for me. My neighbor had waited for our absence to piss us off and steal my property at the same time. He answered the door on the sixth heavy knock as I hit my swollen hand behind my back. As typical, he answered with a beer in hand and a mood that suggested it was not his first. As I explained the issue, he told me in sheer confidence and smugness that his deed said that the land was his, so he took it back, plain and simple. I demanded to see the deeds stepping closer to him and etching into the house. At this point, his mood turned sour and aggressive, pushing me back onto the driveway. Treating me like I was somehow the bad guy here, he said that he rightfully owned half my property and I had stolen the land from the elderly couple before him. I was dumbstruck by the accusation as he continued to rip into me, according to a credible source of his, the property markers during the initial build were set wrong, which left my house with more space than his, though he was not keen to divulge this very credible and intelligent source of his. To answer his so-called facts, I asked again for his proof. He shut the door after saying that he would send me a copy in the morning, ignoring the rest of my shouts. Despite his slurred promise, a few days passed before I saw him again, except it was not to give me his supposed proof. He was instead taking full opportunity of the sunshine to lounge in the pool, my pool. I called out to him as I stood by the fence, though from his sunglasses he looked like he may be asleep, though a beer bottle was floating loosely in one hand. With no sign of him moving, I move around the fence to stand over him, my shadow blocking his tanning process. He finally seemed to notice me, startled by my sudden appearance he tipped over and fell in. 
I waited as he swam to the side and dragged his sad, soggy self out of the water. He was furious at the disturbance, as if being in a pool would not usually make you wet. When I pressed him for proof again, he ignored me and told me to go back to my property. I refused because this was my property, but he refused to accept it. Just before we came to blows, he backed off, leaving me at the poolside as he stormed back to his house. A strange but satisfying win. So I sat at the poolside with my son and wife after seemingly winning back the rights to our yard, though that victory was short-lived when I saw a cop walk around the house towards me, followed by the neighbor. Though I argued my hardest there was little the cop could do in my defense because I was on the wrong side of the fence, I must have been trespassing. My neighbor could not hide their joy as I was cuffed and led to the cop car while my family watched on in horror. Of course my wife came as soon as she could to grant my bail, but that did little to help the hurt to my self-esteem at this point after being dragged through the motions like a common criminal. A few hours later I came home to find someone else who was celebrating a victory. My neighbor was hosting a pool party and invited everyone he knew. Despite my best efforts I could do little to shut up the noise which persisted long into the next morning. Seeing the state of the garden when it was finally over crushed my spirit further, the mess and damage was unbelievable. The law may be of little help to me in sorting this out, but that did not mean that I had to give up entirely. My wife reminded me that our realtor had contact with a local house surveyor and after booking an appointment online I gathered every legal document I had and left for their offices. They were more supportive than I expected, though I had only the earlier cop to compare my situation to. After leaving the case with them for a few days, I sat at the phone waiting to book our next appointment. Luckily, I did not have to wait long and it was much better news than I expected. The surveyor was able to find a copy of the deeds from City Hall, proving the property borders very clearly. I still don't know what kind of proof the neighbor thought he had, but I had no reason to play nice anymore. Maybe I was a little too excited when I approached my neighbor later that afternoon, practically inviting a challenge as I stepped around the fence to meet him at the pool, much to his open shock. I kept my cool though through the argument which only seemed to take him off even more. He threatened me with calling the cops back, a threat I met with a smile. The same cop returned to the yard some 20 minutes later, sighing quietly at the sight of us again. The cop was just as confused by my blatant confidence in breaking the same law two days in a row, but I now had the proof and legal backing to give a good protest. Showing my trump card forced my neighbor into finally retrieving his copy of the deeds, though he looked very uneasy about it. As the cop returned to his car for a moment, the neighbor lunged at me trying to knock me into the pool, but he failed miserably and only sent himself in for another dip. When the cop returned the neighbor had the audacity to claim that I assaulted him though he was the only one at the time being aggressive and demanding. When I mentioned that the cop should maybe try a breathalyzer his mood got even worse and he openly tried to swing at me all but sealing his fate. So I tore the fence down as soon as I saw the cop car turn the corner I was confident that I had little to worry about anymore. And it turned out that I was right, the neighbor's deed was deemed a forgery after some forensic testing later and to add insult to injury he could now add assault and resisting arrest to his police file. I saw the neighbor come home late in the evening, we locked eyes briefly but he never mentioned the missing fence ever again. Of course I also pressed charges on this dangerous idiot of a neighbor and he ended up behind bars later which is exactly where he belonged. And here ripe stars if you enjoyed this story please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and please also leave a like on the video since that would help me tremendously. Thank you so much. The next one is titled My Mother Stole My Money. So I am 19 female and I had only been living with my mom for a good 3.5 years. I was put into foster care at a young age and don't remember living with my mom at all. Before moving in with her she would tell me how great it would be for me to live there and how I would be treated with respect and yada yada. Well since I started college things went to crap. My whole life I wanted to go to college for art but my mother convinced me that it was stupid so I chose to go for a business degree. I got into my state's business and marketing honor society during my last year of high school for having a 98 average in all five of my business classes. My first semester of college everything started out fine and then the end of September hit and I got a reimbursement from the financial aid. 
Let me add, my mother is on SSI for minor disabilities and has not worked in the past 18 years. She has arthritis and fibromyalgia, so apparently she cannot work. I got public assistance that I never knew about since I was never allowed to do paperwork for anything. I thought we only got food stamps, but apparently she lied and said I was paying a couple hundred dollars for rent so she could get more money. So she was getting nearly $500 a month for my needs, I never got anything unless it was Christmas, and $350 a month for food stamps. My boyfriend had to buy me food because I was never allowed to eat at home and did not want to get a $3,000 meal plan on campus. Anyways, I got a healthy $2,000 back from financial aid, which I originally planned on spending on clothes, since I had not had a pair of fitting jeans since I lived with my mom, a laptop for school, and food. Well, apparently, every time I get money, it belongs to my mother. She demanded I give her most of the money, so I spent 1.5k on some jeans for me, a brand new PS4 system, PS Vita, PS Plus, and a bunch of PS4 games for my boyfriend. I know that sounds reckless of me, but he's paid me back for it. She was pissed and belittled me till I gave her the rest of the money for rent and bills and food. She then went off and bought her boyfriend drugs. I was mad because obviously, that's just not okay. I just pushed through the semester and kind of sucked it up like I usually do. February came and pretty much the same thing happened. She demanded my 3k, I got more his past semester because I only had to pay for one textbook, to pay for rent, electricity, the Wi-Fi, food and everything under the sun. She got mad when I refused to give her more than $350. I then went off and spent the money on my anniversary, including outfit, gas, two meals and some gifts, a new phone, my phone barely worked and was 7 years old, and prepaid my phone plan for the next few months. I also bought myself some food for when I was home. She was irate. How dare I spend money on my boyfriend and not the woman who birthed me. I tried staying away from home as much as possible, driving around with my boyfriend for the most part, but every time I came home, I would get yelled at. Well, March was when crap hit the fan. I needed my Medicaid card, they put cash assistance on that card for convenience, and the birth certificate for a program that helps people get jobs in the area, and she was not having it. Apparently saying I needed them was being rude and disrespectful. I ignored her for the most part and kept insisting that I needed them right away because I had to leave. She gave them to me after half an hour of me telling her I needed to leave and just started yelling at me. So I left for a few hours and I got a call from my caseworker asking when I would turn in the timesheets. I had to get a signature from each teacher stating that I was in class to keep my insurance benefits and the food stamps. I did not know about the cash assistance and she told me I could lose the cash assistance if I didn't. I asked her what she was talking about and she told me I got approximately 500 bucks a month to pay for rent and other things I needed. I informed her that I never knew about that and she was very upset that my mom was using the money on god knows what. She told me to change the pin on the card and to not let my mom touch it. So I changed the pin on my card, went home and my room was torn up. My clothes were everywhere, my old laptop was missing, my Christmas gifts from my boyfriend were gone. I was very upset, I told my mom that I wanted my stuff back and she just threw everything at my door. I started packing my bags because I was done with her garbage and she demanded that I give her my Medicaid card back since she keeps everyone else's. She got in my face, threw my glasses onto the floor, tried throwing my new phone and was just screaming at me until I gave it to her. I have post-traumatic stress disorder so I panic whenever someone is even slightly loud. Afterwards she went to the store and tried buying something with it and she came home and started shoving me around demanding I give her the pin. I was just like my father, I was a piece of crap for buying jeans that actually fit me for once in my life, I was trash for liking the presents I got from my boyfriend and not from her, I got pants that were two sizes too big and very low rise for Christmas, etc. She actually hit me because of it and hit me until I gave her my pin. So of course I was dumb and I gave it to her, someone for some reason called the cops and they showed up shortly after and her and her boyfriend started telling them that I was abusive and manipulative and a pathological liar. I showed them where she hit me and tried explaining that she took my Medicaid card but they did not care. The cops never care because supposedly my mom's boyfriend has put half of our local police force into the hospital. After the cops left my mom said that my boyfriend who has done nothing and has only been supportive of me throughout this was a creep, I'm a year older than him and that he was not allowed to enter the house again. 
Then she said I had a new curfew of 6 p.m., I had a class that ended at 5 and it took me two hours to walk home, so that was stupid and if I left the house I was to never return. So then I left. My boyfriend took me to a homeless shelter specifically for teens and young adults that were in abusive situations and had nowhere else to go. I then got my own apartment with the potential of getting a roommate at some point and I honestly have never felt better in my life. The following day I go to get a new card and my mother had taken out 260 at 5 a.m. with the help of my oldest sister. I had four bucks to buy food for two weeks before I could apply for my own food stamps and cash assistance case. Most of the time I only had water and I would eat every three days at my boyfriend's house. When the virus situation hit his dad refused to let me over even though he knew what was going on to a certain extent. I did not eat anything for a week before being able to get food stamps. I wish I had gotten a job but having 8 classes, one of which was 6 hours a week for a measly 1 credit, took up the majority of my time. The college suggested I withdraw to focus on my mental health. I was afraid of leaving my new place because I didn't want to be attacked by my family or my mom's boyfriend's drug addict friends. I went from seeing my therapist for half an hour every other week to seeing her for an hour every week. She suggested that I cut contact with my mom permanently even though it meant losing a good $3,000 worth of stuff I bought myself over the past 12 years. I got paid to babysit and take care of the farm while in foster care and I was so upset about losing all 40 of my stuffed animals. They really meant a lot to me and they kind of were the only things here that helped me calm down from a panic attack. I know it sounds immature but I've had most of them since I was about 8. Then something popped in my head while I was applying for my own food stamps and cash assistance case. The revenge. I realized that I could easily report my mom for welfare fraud. Not only had she been taking my 500 a month but she had lied and said her boyfriend and her did not share food and were roommates so she paid to use other people's food stamps. And she sold her food stamps for cash to buy fast food or drugs. So I did just that. I went to our state's website and reported her fraud, adding when she took the money from my account at 5am that one day. I went into detail, gave the exact location of where she did it and everything. I said she used other people's cards all the time, which was true, and how she demanded my card whenever I had it. A couple weeks later I get a letter from the Department of Social Services DSS. They accidentally send it to my address instead of my mom's thinking she moved along with me. I open it and I read that she was denied public assistance, denied medical insurance and denied food stamps. She met the requirements for getting them but because of my report she lost everything but SSI as far as I know. What probably helped was that I told DSS that she stole my card and requested a new one and the lady at the front desk was mortified. I found out that she took the money out later when I set up the card online and saw all previous transactions for the past year. She is out 850 bucks a month, more than her SSI and out of health insurance which was paid for by the state all because of me and I boasted about it to my therapist. My therapist actually congratulated me because I'm very shy with people so to report something like that was very unlikely of me unless you got me very angry. Not sure if this was appropriate here but it took a lot out of me to be able to even do it. Thanks anxiety. Added for update, my mother's boyfriend apparently passed away last weekend, probably something to do with his cocaine addiction, so she is now out another 800 bucks, $500 food stamps and all the rent to own stuff in his name, which consists of two recliners, a 60 inch TV, fridge, stove and two laptops. And the next ones are gonna be a bunch of malicious compliance stories that I'm pretty sure you have not seen before. This one is titled Malicious Customer Compliance. The best example of malicious compliance I've ever seen was from a colleague of mine, let's call him V. At the time I was new and learning the ropes so I was shadowing him. We were on customer service, every so often we would get a customer that would not believe we had done all we could and demand to see a manager. There was one manager that never came out of the office except to go to lunch or the loo. He happened to be the only one on duty when a customer demanded to see a manager. So V went into the office and told him and he did what he always did. Told V to go back out, tell the customer that it had been discussed with the manager and that the decision stands. The customer would not leave and so V went back one more time and said he really needed the manager to come out to the desk for just a minute. The manager lost his temper and told V to tell the customer to F off. 
He has done this before knowing no one would dare to say that to the customer, so he was just making it plain he would not help and they would have to get rid of the customer themselves. They would usually say things like, he is in a conference call and won't be done for an hour, etc. This time V either stopped caring or realized that I had witnessed the whole exchange and could back him up. V went out to the desk and said, I'm very sorry, but the manager has told me to tell you to F off. The look on V's face was priceless, you would believe he had been browbeaten and being rude to the customer. The customer took it very calmly, asked for the manager's name and the address and phone number for the head office. A couple of days later we get called into the office and the area manager and room manager were in there. They asked me to step out and I learned afterwards that they were asking V what happened and did not want me there because they wanted to see if our stories differed. V came out and sent me in, I told them what I saw which confirmed V's account and the root manager got a warning. He still never came out of the office after that but he never instructed anyone to tell a customer to F off again. And with this we have reached the end of the video, however if you cannot get enough of my content please check out my endless playlist where you can find thousands of hours of content. In addition please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my daily uploads. Thank you so much in advance and I hope to see you again tomorrow.